Hi there, welcome to another training session uh, with computer tutoring, this time at Power BI, continuing the journey of Power BI. And this time we're gonna look at a date table. Why would you wanna make a date table? What sort of benefits can you get out of it? Well, we're gonna look at a date table here and we're going to uh, look at some calculations that you might want to use like fiscal month and fiscal year. There's some probably, probably some better calculations out there. If you work one out, then please comment below, uh, be much appreciated. I've also, this video is linked to the one on the website, Computer Tutoring, I'll put a link there, uh, and you get step-by-step -step instructions as well on how to create a date table. Let's start. So firstly, the data that I've got, I've just uh, gotten data, um, I'll put the link as well below. It's just any sort of main spreadsheet, I've got a list of data. In fact, if I click on sheet one over here on the right-hand side, uh, and then go here, I can see a list of all my data there. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I will just zoom in a little bit. I've got a couple of nice little zoom in buttons. So hopefully these ones will work. Uh, which one is that? Uh, F10 to zoom in. Yeah, we go. And then that should follow about. So there we go. On the left hand side, I can click on the data button. That's fine. So, you know, you've got one for the visualizations, one for data. Uh, we can see a lot of the data here, date sold, that type of thing. So what I want to do is when I create my date table, so when I create my date table, I want it to take from the very first date of the first year in as much as the first day of the first month of the first year of our sales. So if I go to date sold, for instance, here, and I sort it in ascending order, I can see, well, the first sale date I've made is the 1st of February 2014. So I want the date table to take it from the 1st of January 2014. And in that way, I can then, if I want to, display on my visualizations a blank. You know, I can't. I mean, it goes without saying, but I can't display a date that does not exist. So this is one of the advantages of the date table. Let's have a look here as well. If I go down and just see if I can sort it descending, I don't know how much my data goes up to. Oh, it goes into the future. So it goes to the last date of sale is the 23rd of July, 2019. So if you uh, have a quick look there, let's have a look, see if I can zoom in, there we go. So you can see there, 23rd of July, 2019. So what I wanna do with this one, is I want to ensure that it goes to the last day of that year. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Now, what we're going to do for this is instead of actually manually doing it, we're going to do it by using uh, Power BI. But before we do that, I just noticed that my sheet name over here is a little bit wrong. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Just go over here and I'm just going to right click on sheet one. That's good. And then I'm going to go down to and I'm going to rename that. Uh, and I'm just going to call that one Fact Sales. There we go. So there we go. That one's called Fact Sales. Better than sh better than Sheet One, isn't it? Much better. That's good. So, so that's much better than Sheet One. Okay. So next thing we do is we create the date table. So if we go to the modeling tab here at the top, so we've got the modeling tab, and then if we then go to New Table, and then we're going to type in this next calculation. We're just going to drop it down so you can see. So I'm going to call this table. Uh, let me just zoom in as well so you can see. So I'm going to call this table here. Uh, dim date equals and I'll hold down shift and enter to bring down to a new line just tab across Oops, I always forget that Press escape to get rid of the tool tips and then tab across then if I type in calendar okay press enter a couple of times shift and enter a couple of times uh, and then I'm gonna press up and tab to move across now what I need to do next is <clears throat> excuse me, is to type in uh, the beginning date and the end date. So say, for instance, if I knew my data, I could type in uh, the beginning date, uh, it's dates, and then the year 2014, if I remember, the month, the first and the first, like so, and then comma, and then I can do dates, and then I knew 2000, and I think it was 19, I hate those tool tips, you know, the 12th of the 31st. So far, so good. If I press enter, then that would create my date table. In fact, let me just zoom back a bit. There we go. That's it. Uh, and there's dim date over here. So if I click on dim dates, just roll this up a little bit. Um, that's good. And then if I go to my data, that's good. All right, come on. I can see it down at the bottom. Let me just roll it up. Here we go. There we go. So brilliant. I've got my date table. That's fantastic. The only problem that it is, is when I come to refresh my data and add in more data, uh, the issue is going to be, oh, you know what? I've got to keep on going and changing the year. So see if we can extract the year from that. 
Okay, so that's what we want to do, extract the year from that date. So how do we do that? With just a little adjustment with this uh, calculation here. So with the year piece, let me just zoom in a little bit more. There we go. So the year peak piece, instead of actually saying 2014, yeah? So what we can do is we can do the, type in the word year, and then we can take the maximum uh, of our table, which is fact sales. And I think there's one called order date or date sold. There we go, date sold. And goes back to this one here. Okay. Oh, do apologize. Other way around. The minimum, because I want to start for the earliest date there. Let's go around. That's great. I don't need the 2014 now, so that will be calculated automatically. So let's see if we go back here. We're going to do this again with this one. In fact, I'll take the 2019 away straight away. So now what I want to know is I want to know the year. Let's just click away. So I'm going to get rid of those tool tips there. There we go. So you can see. So anyway, year. And this time I want the max of the date, which is fact sales date sold. And then the year there, that's great. So now when I'm finished, I can click on the tick or press enter. Just make sure there's no uh, particular errors happening. Let me just zoom back so you can see my lovely face. Hello. Uh, so there we go. So if you look now at the formula, and if I just roll it up again, it's exactly the same. I get exactly the same results, except as I add more data, then that date table will expand. OK, so it's looking good so far. So now I just need to add a few calculated columns that will be what, you know, which would be good so that we can then uh, say, for instance, uh, extract the month and the, and the day of the week. Maybe we can extract from that. So there's quite a lot of uh, calculations, again, with a link that I'll give you that will get, take you to a site which will take you step by step through that, should you prefer that method. Uh, so let's just start. So this time I'm going to do new column. So here's our new column here. Let me just zoom in a little bit as well so you can see. There we go. Uh, so the new column. So let's say, for instance, we want to get the month. So I'm just going to type in month. I'm going to use a formula called format. It's very similar to the text one in Excel, whereas it will take the, well, no longer fact, the dim date, the date and format it in month so you can see that one there can i just zoom in one more time let's see if i can oh yes i can i'll actually be nice and big on your screens now so you can see month equals format open bracket dim dates date comma and then four m's in uh double quotes so that will give you the full month of the year so if i just zoom back a couple of times press enter and there we go we can see the full month it's getting january uh, the full month of the year there brilliant so let's just do a few other calculations as well. So just gonna zoom in one little bit here. So there we go. Uh, let's go to a new column again. Uh, this time we're just going to type in year so we can extract the year. That's quite straightforward. We've used that already actually with a, um, with a ca uh, calendar, calculated uh, calendar table. Uh, so that's for the date, so that gets the year. And now we've got the year. That's good. Let's see if we can do another one. If we go to new column, let's say if we get, uh, here's one that will be handy later on for organizing the month. That's the month no or the month number. So this is actually where we'd use a month to extract the, mu the uh, month number. So it's month open bracket, dim date, open square bracket, uh, date. That's good. So we've got the month number there. Uh, and there's loads of others you can get. So if I do new uh, column, if I say quarter, so if I say quarter, uh, and I can use the format for this one as well. Um, oops, and that's dim dates and the dates. There we go. And I can put in a Q, or a capital Q will do. That's good, so I can see the quarter. Should I want it to say Q1, Q2, et cetera, all I need to do is concatenate it. So I can put the literally the letter Q at the beginning and then concatenate that with the and, and then it comes up Q1, Q2, et cetera, and I want to do that. So far, so good. Uh, now, say, for instance, I wanted to do something a little fancier. Uh, say, for instance, say I wanted to do the fiscal uh, year or the fiscal uh, month. So normally when I do the fiscal year, I say it's either this year and next year. So, for instance, today's date is March. So it's sort of this year and last year. So basically the calculation goes. Let's get started and let's just start it off new column. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Oops, here we go. 
There we go. So first, let's try. Uh, so we'll do fiscal year. OK, uh, try not to have any gaps in that. That's better. That's good. So what we'll do with this one is doing a little if statement. So what I need to do is check the month on the date. So I'm going to check the month and the date. So firstly, I'm going to uh, bring it down to a new line and tab in and type if just do a couple of new ones there, because sometimes I forget to put my brackets in. So if uh, actually I'll go up one more. The month of dim date. OK, is greater and equal to four. OK, so it's four. If it's April or more, great. Then uh, the fiscal year is basically going to be uh, this year. OK, and then I'm going to concatenate a little forward slash. And next year, because it'll be the first three months of next year. There we go. That's fine. Great. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, January, February or March. Um, and it'll be of the previous uh, fiscal year. So it, we want it to be last year. Oops, I do apologize. One last thing. Next year, we need to do the plus one. So add one to the next year. Brilliant. Otherwise, it's going to be the year of whatever the date is there. But it's going to be in the previous financial year. So minus one to it. Oops, let me just move across a little bit. <laughs> so minus one to it. Uh, and then we'll concatenate the little forward slash and the year that we happen to be in. Yeah, let's just go across. There we go. I should have maybe wrapped this down a little bit, actually. Uh, in fact, I'll do it at the end. Good. That's fine for that one. One more. Uh, that's good. Let me just see that one works. Oh, we've got a little error here. So let's have a look here. Um, oh, in fact, I've got an extra bracket at the end that I don't require. There we go. Brilliant. OK, so we can see here that because this is January, the year is 2014, but it's part of the 2013 to 14 fiscal year. So what I'm just going to do is just click up here and then just press shift to bring these down. These different arguments to make a little bit more sense. Oops. There we go. Brilliant. So I hope that makes sense. So if the month is greater than or equal to four, great. It's then the year and then next year. But if it's not, obviously, if it's less than or equal to four, less than four, one, two or three is going to be the previous year to this year. So there, I hope that makes sense. You can see you've got the fiscal year here. That's fine. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is the fiscal month. So, you know, if it's your month starts, say, for instance, in April, so the financial month. So let's see if we can do that. So uh, let's zoom in again. There we go. Let's do a new column. And then this column was going to be called fiscal month. That's good. Uh, and this time we're going to use a statement called switch. There we go. So what switch does is it basically um, evaluates an expression. So what we're going to look at is we're going to have a look at the month of the dim date and the date to extract that. So that's the expression. You can see that at the top there. That's the actual expression. And then it's the value one and what the result is. So if I type in comma, I try and put these on lots of different lines here. Uh, so if I just click away. Let's press escape. I hate it when it does this one here. Let me just move around here. So say, for instance, yeah, that's better. <laughs> OK, so say, for instance, that the month will start with April. So say, for instance, the month is April. So it's four. OK, in the real terms, in fiscal terms, it will be month number one. Yeah. So then if it's five in fiscal terms, month number two. If it's six, so if it's June in the fiscal year, month number three and basically so on. We need to just go down this way. So I'm just doing it many times. It's probably a faster way of doing this, but. Uh, there we go. OK, eight, 12, nine. 
Then the tenth month will be then uh, sorry. The first month, rather, <laughs> this one here will then be the tenth in the financial financial year. The second month will be the eleventh, and last but not least, we'll put a twelve in. So that's the case all statement there. So what I do is press enter, and then if we have a look there, we can see the fiscal month. So if it's uh, January, the month number one, the fiscal month is month number ten. Excellent. So we know which fiscal month it is. So we know what month of the year it is there. Great. That's good. All right, then. So just one last thing. We've got this month here and we need to order the months. We need to order them here. If we don't, when we drag them onto the visualizations, they won't. Let's have a single face. So if we don't order the month, so here, as I'm pointing here, if we don't order them, when we drag them on the visualizations, they won't be in month order. I believe I do have another video on that, or at least a link as well to a website about that. So let me show you what I mean. So if I go say, for instance, yeah, that looks really good. And I go back here and I drag a matrix or I choose a matrix across and that looks good. Uh, let's just make that a little bigger. And I've got my nice date table here. So if I drag month across, and if I have a look at the order, you see it's April through to December. So when I try and reorder it, you know, if it, even in reverse order, it comes up September through to April. Let's just move my little head out of the way here. So if I even go to my formatting and the grid, and then let's just see if I can just make the font. There we go, a little bit bigger. So you can clearly see that it's out of order. And the reason is, is because it's alphabetical it just recognizes it as alphabetical so i'm going to go back to my data tab here on the left hand side and then what i'm going to do is i'll choose my month and then i can choose sort by and then choose month number so now when i go back here i can see it's sorted by month number in fact i didn't even have to go back to the data tab i could just have clicked clicked it over here if i wanted to as well so let's say for instance if we wanted to do the financial year so if i just uh, uh, delete that one so if i had the financial year uh so if i go back to the data here uh, i'm missing a financial month so let's do a new column uh let's just zoom in at the top here as well here we go okay so i'm going to put fiscal uh month there we go uh, and i all i'm just going to do is do that formatting of uh, dim dates and dates and i want that to be month it's exactly the same these months here this fiscal month i've got fiscal month in fact this wouldn't be better as fiscal month number actually in fact i'm going to change that one just here to fiscal month number that's good excellent so if i then go to back to fiscal month here great so now i need to make sure fiscal month is selected or let's i tell you what let's just do this uh back on the visualization so over here on the right hand side uh, you see here if i select fiscal month here i can then go up to sort by at the top and choose fiscal month number see if i don't do that what will happen is is when i drag fiscal month across you see it won't be in the right order so april may june july august you see that's the financial month order so if you want to do sort of calculations with that great excellent all right then so nearly there the only problem is is when you say for instance okay i want to now look at some data uh, what i can do is i drag my matrix across that looks great and i think yeah let's do some financial calculations here well let's just do some standard calculations here so if i drag my year across first uh well, i don't want them as values i want them as rows there we go yeah it's nice and in order tell you what before i carry on i'm just going to go to my items here let me just increase my text size there we go and i drag my month across as well which is good so it's going as columns here i want to just nest that underneath there that's great I've got my little drill down button i don't know if you notice that one there so this little drill down button allows me to drill down so I can now go to the different months and they're nice in order here. But when I drag my total across to my values, there we go. Yeah, in fact, it's not actually doing, is it? No, oh, yes, it is. You see what I mean? It's, it's just showing the whole figure. And that's because I haven't formed a relationship yet. 
So I need to form that relationship. So if I go back to my relationships here, this window here, and then what I'm going to do is just make this a little bigger. I'm just going to dip this down a bit to the left and on my date table, so to the right, and then the date table to the left. Okie dokie. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to form a relationship between dates by holding down my mouse and dragging from date in the dim dates table to date sold in fact sales. Okay. Now, for some reason, and I believe that these dates here are all unique. They shouldn't be. I think because of the data that I created, it is one sale per day. But in the real world, you'll have many sales per day. And that's why it's chosen a one-to-one -one relationship here. So what I'm going to do is just double click on the relationship line just to get the what's known as the cardinality right. So at the moment, I've got dim date at the top and fact sales. So that should be a one-to-many relationship. So I'm going to click on the drop down list and choose one to many. So every one date that exists in dim date, that relates to many relationships, in fact, sales. So that's great. Oh, I'm covering the button here. So let's move myself out of the way. Click on OK. That's great. So I can now see the one on the one side of the table here and the little many, the little asterisks on the many side of the table. So now if I go back to my visualization, you can start to see that my data is split up there, which is fantastic. Again, with the uh, totals, uh, let's move myself down here. I can click on the total here and under the modeling tab, I've got like buttons for currency that I can change. Let's change it to United Kingdom. There we go. So it should all turn up as pounds and pence. Uh, eventual. Uh, maybe I have the wrong one selected. Let's try again, shall we? There we go. United Kingdom. That's a bit better. Great. And uh, now because we've got a date table, we can easily create the financial year. So let's do that, shall we? So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Uh, bring that one out here this way. Okay. Uh, that's good. Just got this one here. And instead of year and month, what we're going to do is I'm just going to drag financial year, fiscal year here at the top. Let's get rid of normal year. Get rid of month. Try fiscal month. Drag that down. And do a little, do a little down. There we go. So now. You can see the data with the fiscal month. That's great. Uh, that's really good there. So we can see the fiscal one from 2013 to 14. The last thing that really need to do is an option at the bottom here. So if I just move myself out of the way, there we go. So there's a little option here at the bottom. Uh, three little buttons. If I click on that, uh, oh, not apologize. That's uh, uh, actually a, my option is I click on this here. Move me out of the way. Uh, you see under fiscal month here, what I can do is I can click down here and say show items with no data. So when I do that, if I go, because I have no now data for January, because it didn't exist, I didn't have any sales for January. I can didn't have any sales for January. <clears throat> That's better. Uh, I can now show the blanks there. And if I now scroll all the way down to the bottom, of my data, I can see that I've got all this data up to the end of the financial year, which is great for charts and things when you want to do that. So I hope that's helped and how you can create a date table and do some fiscal month and fiscal year calculations. There's so much more to Power BI. If you haven't already done so, then please check out the website. Look at the links in the exercise files as well. There's some that you can download. Uh, if you haven't already booked a training course, then please do so with Computer Tutoring. We'll be more than happy to come and look at your data and see how Power BI can help you out. Uh, just want to say thanks for watching.